Okay, it's 4 o'clock on uh, Thursday, June 13th, 2019. We have a quorum, so I'll call this library board meeting to order. First item is the approval of the agenda, which is shown, everyone has it on their tablet in front of them. So I will make a motion to approve the agenda as it's shown. Do I have a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second to approve the agenda. Any uh, discussion, corrections? Okay, none. So all in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carried. Then there is the approval of the minutes from the May 9th Library Board meeting. And the minutes are there um, to review. But also everyone, hopefully, I think most everyone got the emails to that could link to this. So um, I will make a motion to approve the minutes from the May 9th 2019 library board meeting. Do I have a second? Second. A motion and a second. Do I have any discussion, corrections that anybody knows about, edits? All right, not hearing any then. I will, uh, all in favor of approving the minutes from the May 9th, May 9th meeting, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, motion carried. Now we'll go into the financial report. Click on the link and we can call that up. All right, Paulina. Okay, um, we are 43.01% through 2019, and our budget is approximately 34.38% expended. Um, we had some contractional maintenance building bills in May, which included um, remittances to GAC sheet metal to locate and repair roof leaks and um, gopher alarms and Riverview sanitation. We also had a couple of um, bills for uh, computer supplies and equipment, which included accessories for setting up um, a new children's catalog computer and a USB adapter for the Mac that we're using for the memory lab. So I, I've noticed that there's a, last month we had uh, uh, small bill for repairing the roof leak mm -hmm. and now we've got two other ones is this going to be an ongoing thing do you think or I don't believe so I think the uh, the two leaks that um, they located were on the children's roof um, uh, by the door which we were having an issue with it was with the connection of the two buildings and they did patch the um, significant leak that we've had by the service desk okay so they yeah. feel that they've mm -hmm. we found the leaks that they're not going to be chasing them around and paying Yes. Eternal bills. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so we can get the roof fixed. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> All right. Anybody else have any questions for Paulina regarding the financial report? All right, then we'll move on to the librarian's report. Okay. And we'll start with the department activities report and statistics. Okay. Sure. Um, so on May 4th, we had an all-day celebration of Star Wars, May the 4th Be With You, with um, crafts, trivia questions, book displays, and gift bags for participants. Uh, we also had episodes of the Lego Star Wars movie showing in the children's room. Um, also, um, May was pretty much prepping a lot of our summer reading um, programs, and both the Youth Services Librarian and the Youth Services Library Aid hosted annual middle school fifth graders and first graders from Jefferson for a tour of the library and a, a presentation about the summer reading program. Um, the Youth Services Librarian also conducted um, quite a bit of outreach at Washington um, with a parents group, Eagle Preschool Parents, Jefferson, and St. Paul. Um, this month encouraging participation in the summer reading program and so we started um, our first week first sign up day was on Monday and so far we have uh, 423 kids signed up and 2019 um, so that's I think pretty pretty good numbers I'm not sure if that's our norm or not but um, we're looking good and um, registration for the battle of the books began on the first of the month and we have five young teens registered to participate in August um, this year all right any questions okay we'll move on to the actual statistics is there anything in particular you want to point out or um, no, our f f this um, we can bring it up. Our soldiering, our budget work um, time, but um, 
Our physical item circulation and overdrive circulation has definitely increased over last May, which is pretty good. Um, we've seen about a 3,000, uh, approximately, it's gone up um, from 9,796 last May. This May we have circulated um, 12,507 physical items. I see the overdrive continues to climb me up. Mm -hmm. well. Yeah, and that's about 5% of our circulation currently. And you might notice that I know uh, some of our computer usage has gone down a little bit, uh, but our wireless stats have <coughs> gone up. So I think that's kind of balancing out. We have more people using their phones and laptops in the library. All right, any questions on the statistics? Okay, thanks. Now we'll move on to programming. April? Um, we finished up the Becoming American series on May 30th with a program titled Immigration Through New Ulm Eyes. Um, I wanted to thank Dan Hoisington. He led the discussion on our Becoming American series as well as this last program. So I want to appreciate his support um, and his um, work with this program with us. We had 23 come to our last session. Um, adult programming slows down for the summer. Um, we have our all of our regular book groups will continue through the summer um, and our needlework group which meets um, the first and third Wednesday of the month at 930 will continue to meet through the summer. Um, but our children's programming really picks up for the summer reading program. So some of our upcoming programs for children include story times, um, which meets Mondays at 10 a.m. and Wednesdays at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. And that'll be our schedule through the end of July for story time. On Tuesday, June 18th at 1.30 p.m., we have a teen program. They'll be able to come in and make mini element jars um, with a variety of craft materials. And they can use those as keychains or necklaces um, looks like it'll look like a little universe in a jar. Uh, registration is required for that program, um, so you can either call or visit the library 3598331. On Wednesday, June 19th at 1 p.m., we have an archery class with Scott Kadelka from the DNR that'll meet down at the archery range on Tower Road. Ages eight and older are welcome with an adult. Registration is also required for that program and. Um, the kids must have a signed waiver as well. Lego Club will meet on Thursdays from 1.30 to 3.30 p.m. and that will go through the end of July as well. On Friday, June 21st at 2 p.m. we have a space themed movie which has been sponsored by the Optimus Club so we thank them for their support. On Tuesday, June 25th at 2 p.m. we have Reading is Fundamental with Don B of the Homeward Bound Theater Group. That'll be at the Civic Center, so thank you to Parks and Rec for letting us use their space. Um, Don will do a variety of acrobatics on his unicycle, and he focuses on teaching the kids how he learned how to ride a unicycle and do his various tricks from reading at the library when he was growing up. Um, children's programming will take a break for the week of July 1st through 6th, since many people are on vacation for the 4th of July. And then on Tuesday, July 9th at 2 p.m., we have Strange New Planet for ages 6 to 10. Um, this is a hands-on space exploration activity where, where kids will do a variety of activities to demonstrate the different ways that NASA explores space. And we'll recreate that for another group of kids on Wednesday, July 10th at 2 p.m. Um, and then on Friday, July 12th at 2 p.m., we have the USS Enterprise, the um, Star Wars, or excuse me, not Star Wars, Star Trek ship. Um, it's a building activity for kids, and registration is required for that one. Then on Saturday, July 13th at 10 a.m., the Narin will visit the library. And there'll be plenty more through the end of the July, so we'll share that at our next meeting. So the registrations that are needed for some of the activities, is that so that they can what are the right amount of materials and all that kind of stuff to figure out based on how many you have signed up? Right, and so that we can keep the activity at a manageable level for okay. those who are leading it. <laughs> so are, are there some limits then too? That you cut it off after so many? Or? Yep, and we'll take um, we'll take a few names on a waiting list too, just in okay. case people can't come. 
All right. Any questions? Any other questions for April? Sounds like a busy summer. Yes. All right. Then we'll go with a staffing update, Paulina. Oh, yeah. Um, we have hired Julie um, Hirschbeck. She will be starting part time as a new library aide on June 25th. Um, she'll be working about 16 hours a week. Hmm, good. So then are you fully staffed now then? Or? Yes. <coughs> then we'll move on to the roof update. Yep. Um, so we, um, uh, I spoke with um, the building official, and he's working on a spec sheet for the roof replacement for that lower um, roof that we have over the circulation desk. And he's waiting on some information from a local glass company that um, they may have found a different skylight manufacturer to get some specs and pricing on it um, to decide what to do with that. Hey, do you know when we'll get uh, further updates then for uh, that? Well, I'm, ho I'm hoping July or August. Okay. Um, I spoke with him um, this week and then the week before. So he said, he told me last week he was working on it. Okay. So then is the yeah. plan then to get the work done this this year, young? Uh, then, yeah? I hope so, yes. Because <laughs> I mean, we're already in the middle of June and right, before yeah. you know it, it'll be winter time right. and then we won't be able to work on it. So. <laughs> yeah. All right, <coughs> and then we'll go with the Brown County Library Board update, mm -hmm. uh, either Carl or Paulina. Okay, um, so we had uh, the Brown County Brown County Library Board meeting on Monday, and we received the first Brown County payment for um, $8,200. Um, we also talked a little bit about overdrive. So the um, Brown County Libraries recommended, um, and it was approved at the meeting, um, that in August at the Commissioner's Budget meeting, we will be asking for a $5,000 increase, and in turn, the Brown County Library Board will pay the $5,000 like kind of base fee for the overdrive on our behalf um, overdrive has increased um, we've been operating um, for the last 10 years with um, Brown Cap so that's oh, right um, so almost 10 years ago when Travers to Sioux libraries went into overdrive together and um, Brown County has been paying as um, a county so New Ulm pays the bills for overdrive um, and then we get reimbursements from the Brown County libraries um, so at the last directors meeting um, it was voted that an increase um, was needed, which was recommended by the overdrive committee. And like I mentioned, there hasn't been an increase since the beginning. So Brown County has been paying $3,000. 1,000 is for the platform base. And then the 2,000 has been for content, for overdrive, for eBooks and e-audio books. So um, with the new formula, um, it's based on like we based it on a base fee and then uh, the second part this is just for Brown County um, and the second part of that will be a uh, percentage of circulation um, for us so um, so the rest would be it would still be the thousand for the platform and then the rest is for content um, so new alms a percent circulation of the whole cooperative uh, is 11.36 percent um, our patrons check out that many of the whole kind of TDS pool uh, with um, blue earth Mankato surpassing us at 31.54 um, percent um, so that's what what's been recommended um, but for um, the commissioners for next year. So are you, are you saying that we're going to be changing from basically a flat fee to a percentage? Um, a part of it, the um, a 2707. Right. Yeah, we'll, we'll have the flat fee of 5,000 that we base by population, like we have been for right. the 3,000, and that additional 2707 we'll be doing as a, a percentage of circulation, at least right. w for us in Brown County. You know, that's what we kind of figured out would work for us. All right, anything else to add, Carl? Or? Well, I, th I think I wanted to add maybe um, for, for clarification, and that is that the county library board voted to uh, present to the county commissioners mm -hmm. a flat sum increase rather than a percentage of right. the total. So we're going to seek a $5,000 adjustment for 2020, um, the the uh, 
disbursement will remain the same, but that additional $5,000 will be going into a separate account to pay right. towards the overdrive uh, cost, uh, additional cost. And uh, the new county commissioner representing the county board on the, on the library board was at the meeting and he seemed to favorably receive that mm -hmm. information about what we're going to be seeking at their uh, budget hearing meeting in mid-August. And we'll get that date out and, uh, mm -hmm. like we have in the past so that we can get a good representation from the community and perhaps this board as well to uh, be at that meeting. I think that's important that uh, the, the county board see the kind of interest in uh, that budget. So overall, what's your feel for them approving the increase? Well, it's it's hard to say. I, I, the uh, increases that we've sought the last two years has been roughly five percent, I believe. Yes. And this five thousand isn't uh, much higher than that. So okay. you know we're kind of still in that five percent plus. I don't think it's quite six percent. I didn't do the math, but uh, I think we're just a, a bit over that five percent. So I'm hopeful that they will again uh, be favorably inclined. To approve the, that request and you had indicated that the more people that show up to show the support the more favorable you think it uh, I th it might go yeah I, I think that certainly helps uh, when they see the interest that the the, the, the um, uh, is generated within each community um, that's it that's has an interest in seeing that uh, the that library system within the county is supported All right, anything else? I have a general question about sure. overdrive, since mm -hmm. you were talking about that. Is the overdrive <coughs> collection something that needs to be weeded out, just no. like our physical books do? Mm -hmm. no? uh, we don't. We do weed some um, in terms of it, it's more or less self-weeding. Um, we purchase certain books to be in the collection kind of forever to a certain degree, but then there's others. Um, that are only 22 checkouts per item and then we would have to repurchase it. So that's where we kind of run into a budgetary issue to a certain degree because some of them run upwards of 90, they're $90 or so, um, depending on what it is, who the publisher is. Um, they're not, the, the pricing is not the typical pricing of a hardcover or a paperback. Uh, they're um, inflated a little bit more just per, um, per circ. Um, but we also are, um, the overdrive committee has also, the person who um, <coughs> has been purchasing, I think we're also looking at putting a monthly um, fee each month to reduce some of our hold levels. Um, so they've been uh, kind of testing out um, CERC, um, charging by CERC. So not exactly purchasing the book. So I think we've done that once or twice so just to kind of reduce some of the hold levels um, on a particular box. So it's a, a bit of a combination. Thank you. Yep. So with all the financing and stuff for all this, is that kind of factored into the budget then? To a little bit, just in case um, it d does not, we do not receive an increase um, from that $5,000 increase from Brown County. I did, if you look at the um, budget, I did include $3,000 um, extra in audiovisual supplies. So that's where our, um, what we pay into overdrive has been coming out of. Okay. So anything else from the Brown County Library Board in terms of update? Mm -hmm. All right, then we'll roll right into the budget discussion then. Mm -hmm. So Pauline, if you want to oh, kind of sure. lead that. Sure. Um, so attached is documentation to help library staff and library library board prepare the 2020 library budget. Uh, so the city finance um, office has discretion over some of the lines and those are the ones that are not bolded on um, the spreadsheet. Um, 
we have not received um, numbers for that. Um, the finance director should have those numbers to me by the 20 of around the um, July, June 24th. Um, so I just uh, calculated a 2.5 percent increase on salaries and um, the insurance group medical. That's all we know so far. Um, the Traverse de Sioux Library Cooperative has indicated New Alm should expect a 3.78% increase for TDS fees, which um, would increase at about $1,216. Um, the finance director also recommends that the library aim for no more than a 5% increase in its budget, giving that direction. Um, we are, um, we recommend the following budget. I did include um, th a decrease in um, library fines. So we would be potentially going fine free in 2020 if um, that is what the board would like to do. No, it's for books only though, right? Yeah, it's for books only. So there's no fines on books or um, DVDs. There would be fines on like hotspots and other material. Yeah. And it would not include a lost and damaged item fees. Um, also, let me see. So also we increased uh, communication by 200 uh, to cover advertising costs. Um, we also increased travel conference and schools by 200. And that also includes some um, like workshops and things that we do um, as a city staff w with um, different programs and such. Um, Contractional maintenance building has been increased by 3,000. Um, this line uh, covers everything from you know monthly um, garbage pickup to repair of AC unit repairs. Um, in 20 last in 2018, uh, we overspent this line by about 3,900. In 2017, it was overspent by about 825. We always hope we don't overspend it, but well, hopefully that will cover us. Um, we also increased subscriptions and memberships by 500 um, to cover, um, just to maintain our, mag our subscriptions. We've, um, the reference library and cut quite a few um, magazines last year, but also we were hoping it won't be much of an increase um, over last year as some magazines I think have been folding a little bit, but that might just cover our bases. Um, that also includes newspapers. Um, um, I did also increase um, the book budget by 3,000. Um, going through some numbers, um, over last year, our books, new bo all our books across all departments um, circulated about 11.8% over the year before. So that would um, kind of enable us to buy more material. Um, I think part of the reason that mm -hmm. um, especially the new yeah. books are circulating more widely is because we switched the location of the DVDs in the new books, yeah. so the yeah. new books are out front. Yep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, I think that's about it, unless anyone has any questions. Oh, I did um, also increase the, like it mentions our computer supplies and equipment has been increased 500 to 8,000. We are saving about 4,500, um, 18,000 over the next four years with the Chrome boxes. Um, but we are on a four year rotation to replace staff computers. And next year we'll see the replacement of three service desk computers, um, the library director's computer. And the I discovered the microfilm scanner computer um, was installed in 2013 and hasn't and should probably be due for a replacement. Um, I'm also looking at potentially um, enabling wireless printing sometime next year um, and that uh, with um, the initial cost I think runs about 600 uh, six to eight hundred um, so that's something we're kind of I'm, I'm still <coughs> investigating lip data um, mm -hmm. in regards to wireless printing do you want to mention um, what Nate, the IT director, told you about the costs of computers oh yeah he's been mentioning he's uh, currently um, working on replacing some of the staff computers within the city and uh, he's mentioned that they have gone up 
white in price uh, currently because of, I, I believe, tariffs and things like that. So I know he um, the w particular ones he wanted for some of the type of apartments were not available yet. Th there's been like a backlog um, for the last couple months, and he's mentioned that at a couple of different department heads meetings. Okay. So then when you replace the staff computers and stuff, is that all with the latest... Uh, like Windows 10 mm -hmm. and stuff like that, yeah. then, or is that in that is, does that just track yeah. what the what the city does, uh, or is it mainly uh, the uh, what's available? Um, if a little bit of both. Like we kind of decide what um, what to get with recommendations from both um, the TDS automation librarian and yeah. from Nate here at the city. And we have a is it a three or a four year replacement cycle? Um, I, th I, th I think I th it's three. Is it three? Okay. So yeah. that we're replacing all of our mm -hmm. staff machines every three years. Yeah. Okay. But is the goal then to keep all the operating systems at the, the same level so that mm -hmm. like if there's a new Windows version that comes out and you only have it on three of them, you really want to replace it on all of them? Or, or do we have some that are kind of outliers then? There'll be a different operating system then for... Um, for the most part, I think uh, they're all on the same. We usually do updates on the ones that, okay. yeah. Yep. So overall, then, the recommendations, you got a line item here that says it's about 3.13% yes. increase. Mm -hmm. So yep. that's well below the recommended 5. Mm -hmm. yep. And so as you get closer to 5, do they kind of flinch or kind of um, nervous, or what are they? I don't know yet. Okay. <laughs> this is my <laughs> first budget. <laughs> with, <laughs> with it the says recommended, director. but right. I don't know. <laughs> Recommended yeah. means like if you go right. over too much, well, right. then that's yeah. not good. Right. Well, it's never good, but yeah. Um, but yeah, so we'll get more numbers in terms of um, some of our utilities and things like that um, I can within uh, the next couple of weeks. Speak for experience from w mm -hmm. last year. Um, we were looking at a similar similar increase last year, and then when I got the salary numbers, I kind of freaked out because <laughs> it put us <laughs> above that. And Nicole, our finance director, said we were still fine. We were okay. Range. So, from what I've experienced so far, this seems okay. Mm -hmm. no, I suppose if you can justify it, it's it's oh, okay. Yeah. But mm -hmm. if it's uh, uh, they'll make you sharpen your pencil and right. get rid of the yeah. <laughs> yeah. would be nices. We can do and that. Yeah. 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 And then you mentioned here the fund balance is uh, currently at 49.6% oh, yes. of the budget. Mm -hmm. Best practice is 35 to 50%. So what, the higher the number, the better the? I, I think so, yeah. Well, I think we should probably stay around the 50, so yeah. But okay. we kind of dip into it occasionally. Um, so the library board will need to approve a recommended budget at the July 11th meeting. It's going to be due on July 13th to the finance department okay. and then forward on to city council. So then the attached worksheet shows all the areas where the increases okay. were. Mm -hmm. We can look at that and then that's, barring any changes, that's what we expect to be looking at next month then for? Um, there will be more um, information in terms okay. of like electricity, gas, water, things like that. Right. We'll have definite numbers for next year on okay, those. Okay, but most I of the increases that you had oh yeah. over mm -hmm. this month are, yes. are already kind of factored in there. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Paulina, have uh, staff or patrons approached uh, you about an interest in a 3D printer? I can't say that they have. No, I would have to talk to um, our youth services librarian. Um, April, have you had any interest? Um, since I've been with the library, we have not discussed it, and I have not had any patrons bring it to my attention. Um, and Chris, when she was here, had never shared any plans with me mm -hmm. regarding a 3D printer. Mm -hmm. I know that the Sleepy Eye Library added one within the last year, but I believe that that was part of a large donation they received. Mm -hmm. What is the expense of a, do you have any idea? I don't know off the top of my head. They're, they're a little pricey. <laughs> um, yeah, but they get, they're they get cheaper all the time. Yeah. Depends on what you're using it for and stuff mm -hmm. like that right. too, but at least I would say three to five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and then that's just, just base cost and then you get the material. Mm -hmm. that, uh, the rolls utilized. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we'd have to come up and mm -hmm. figure out some way to if we had that, you know, if we were going to charge for, for that or be a free mm -hmm. service, but. I, I would like, you know, in our interest of providing technology to mm -hmm. uh, our patrons in the community that maybe there's some initial discussions amongst staff that could 
start looking at in case sometime between now and next year, say a year out, that that might be something of interest that we want to look at sure. uh, obtaining a, a printer of that type. See about the cost and mm -hmm. how we can use it and where you could put it and that sort of thing. Does anyone know that the local schools have 3D printers? The middle school does. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I believe they have one or two. I'm not sure. They have um, a, a really cool kind of maker space area. Mm -hmm. um, we saw two in our oh, yeah. tour mm -hmm. with the TDS mm -hmm. boards. Yes, yeah. so they have two there. So I wonder if like uh, uh, Sleda's STEM group has one too. I mean, yeah. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they might. It's possible. Yeah. All right, good discussion. Anything else for the budget that we want to talk about at this time? So then we can expect next month then to be uh, voting on the mm -hmm. on the budget so that it can go before the the city council then. Yep. Okay. All right. Then we'll move on to the action items. We got a bunch of them. We'll start off with resolution 2019-13 accepting April 1st through June 7, 2019 <coughs> donations. This is the first reading and adoption. The attached list describes donations received by the library from April 1st, 2019 through June 7th, 2019. This includes general donations and memorials as well as donations made directly to the Children's Department for the summer reading program. The library board um, and then the Library Board of the Noam Public Library accepts these donations with gratitude to the donors and then there's the approval. So the listing of the donors, the donations and the memorials is there. There's a variety of cash and merchandise goods. So I will entertain a motion to accept the donations and the memorials from the April 1st through June 7th, 2019 time period. So move. A second. So I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Okay, hearing none, then all in favor of accepting the donations and memorials from this time period say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. And the next resolution is 2019-14. First reading and adoption of the approving $1,500 expenditure of donation for purchase of large print books. The library requests $1,500 out of Fund 212 donations and memorials for the purchase of large print books after City Council consents the library's April 1st through June 7th, 2019 donations and memorials on June 18th, 2019. These funds were donated in May of 2019 by the Lions Club of New Orleans, thousand dollars, and an individual donor of five hundred dollars, and they will be expended as follows: all of it, all fifteen hundred for large print books. It is expected that these funds will be expended by September 2019. And then, as a note, in 2010, the New Orleans Public Library approved <coughs> Resolution 2010-10. Approving expenditures or donations received as designated or memorial which states as follows, for all individual donations of $500 or more, the library director will request authority within 90 days from the library board to expend those funds for the designated or memorial purposes identified by the donor. All right, uh, before we go on to a vote here, I got a question. Okay, uh, I'm, I don't recall seeing this statement in here about the city council consenting to uh, to the library's uh, um, votes on this, and I'm wondering what's what's that all about? Oh yeah, usually um, I would probably wait till July uh, to um, put this resolution, and we usually um, before we can um, after our donations and memorials are approved by the library board, then the city council approves it as well. Oh, in okay. Their yeah, in their consent, um, and um, yeah, I could have waited till July but I figured so I then could just that would have been after yeah. the fact of the city council and then and then we do another resolution yeah okay mm -hmm. all yeah. right because I was just unfamiliar yeah. with that I thought yeah. oh I didn't know that the city council had the consent of our mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. okay well that makes sense all right so uh, I will entertain a motion then for accepting the uh, or approving of the $1,500 expenditure for the donation for large print books 
so move. I'll second. Okay, I have a motion and people fighting over seconds. <laughs> um, any further discussion or questions? Paulina, are you able to estimate uh, how 1500 translates into what number of large print books? I'm sure it doesn't come out exactly. I have so um, maybe a hundred or so. It depends um, on who Betty purchases from. Um, large print books can run anywhere from like I, I believe forty ish, to, or they used to be like forty to fifty dollars. Uh, but it, like I said, it kind of depends on the publisher. I think we get a lot of ours from Gale Publishing. Um, so I have to. I might have to get back to you on that one. That but that's why I would say about a hundred, maybe. It brings up a good much. question though about if there's any surplus of of monies. You know, you want the mm -hmm. fifteen hundred, but you don't use it all, or you know, do you, can you go over slightly, or are you for, forbidden to do that? Like if it comes to fifteen and hundred and ten dollars to get a, uh, one more book, I mean, how do you usually do that? Does it usually end up with a you don't spend it all, or yeah, I don't know. Do, 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 do you know well, the I way the city accounting works is they really want us to keep all of our purchases for one donation within that donation. Okay. So when Betty tracks her purchasing, she's spending. If the one donation is a thousand, she'll spend as close to a thousand as she can, and then that donation is closed out. Okay. And so there is a little bit of a slush that just goes. Okay, so that then goes back into yeah. the main budget or the mm -hmm. main fund. Yeah. Okay. All right, any other discussion? Okay, then all in favor of approving the $1,500 expenditure for of donation for the purchase of large print books, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. Now we have a resolution for window cleaning, resolution number 2019-15. This is the second reading and adoption. Uh, last month we had a, a single bid and we were requested to get a competitive bid to get a feel for how that bid stood in terms of uh, uh, the overall market. And then now the a couple bids have come in as well as some uh, additional information. So the library <coughs> director requested bids from window cleaners to complete window washing of the exterior and interior of the library. Due to the height of the windows, they have not been cleaned in a number of years. Enclosed is also the correspondence with Bob Halla from the Parks and Rec Department indicating that they have extending poles that are 18 feet. The maintenance technician has used the same poles for the outside of the building but cannot get the whole height. The department also has a man lift for outside of the building that can be used on level cement that goes up to 19 feet. The windows on the north side of the building, however, do not have level cement. So then we have two bids for external uh, companies. One is uh, Dirk's Windows, which was the bid we saw last month. Uh, for the interior window cleaning, it was 575, and to do both interior and exterior cleaning, it was 1050. And then bid number two, which is the new bid, is from Clearview New Ulm or NU. The interior only would be 300. The outside only would be 480. However, the, there's a misprint here. The mm -hmm. total for both the interior and the exterior is 700. So it gives us a price cut for that. And that can be found if you open up the, uh, uh, the quote itself. You can see that uh, it was 700. So it was just <coughs> transferred incorrectly. Uh, the library director recommends the library contracts the work with an outside vendor and recommends using the contractual maintenance building budget line for this expenditure. So before we get into the vote, I got a question on, okay, so the Parks and Rec indicated they have all this tooling that we could use, but they, I noticed they kind of didn't volunteer anybody to do it. So does that <laughs> right. mean that we'd yeah. have to do it ourselves <coughs> if we wanted to go that route? I, I, th um, I think um, our maintenance technician would, but there is um, the time spent on it, I think yeah. would be significant for him in the mornings because okay. um, he would probably have to do we kind of were figuring out he would probably have to take a week or so to do it in the mornings okay. um so I, it might not be feasible with his time okay. um and i'm a little worried about the inside of um if we do do both um which i would recommend um at the in the tall windows on the inside and that, children's that was my main concern too for the the safety issues yeah. 
and then uh, just the fact that it could be done but because it's done so infrequently mm -hmm. it better to have someone who knows what they're doing and also has the right tools to do that right okay so then I will entertain a motion for well, well let's discuss the bid mm -hmm. so we have two bids we got one that's uh, about three hundred dollars more and the other one the first bid for Dirk's windows and you're you're wanting to go with interior and exterior right uh, that would yes so Dirk's windows comes in at 1050 and then Clearview and you comes in at 700 so based on that then I will entertain a motion to approve the bid from Clearview and you for the window cleaning interior and exterior for the price of 700 so move I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Questions? Do we ensure, I assume, that someone does that they're properly bonded and insured? Yeah. Good yes. question. I, I believe so, yeah. I, I will check. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if we run mm -hmm. that through like uh, Elwood, mm -hmm. you know, Elwood. in the city <laughs> to, to double check that to make sure, yeah, because if something should happen, right. yeah, we don't want to be liable for that. So, all right. That's a good question. So we need to verify that these vendors are uh, are bonded, and so from a liability point of view. So uh, I suppose I could amend the motion to indicate that we would go with Clearview for the price indicated, provided <laughs> that we find that they are bonded, or we could hold off t the vote till next month to determine, make that determination. Well, I think you might be able to to uh, put that motion out subject to the mm -hmm. confirmation by city staff that they're properly bonded and insured to perform the work. Okay. And so then if they're not, if we find that they're not bonded, uh, I don't want to go revert back to necessarily Dirk's windows at this point. We'll have to readdress it. Right. So mm -hmm. it's either we go with clear view if they're bonded, and if not, we got to readdress it. Mm -hmm. You want to agree with that? Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. So based on, I'm not going to re repeat all that, <laughs> but based on that, <laughs> <laughs> um, all in favor of approving the Clearview NU bid for interior and exterior window cleaning based on the stipulations we provided, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right. Motion carried. <coughs> All right, the next one is the approving updates to the programming policy. Okay, now this is resolution 2019-16, and this is called a recital. This is the first time I've seen this, so I asked Paulina what this was, and she indicated she's going back to the days of yesteryear. <laughs> so you want to give us a little update as to what a <laughs> recital well is as compared I to a, a, I, I a reading? I thought they were both the same, but I do realize I um, should have put them on the bottom of, so it should be a first reading and adoption and then recitals would be um, below approving updates to programming policy. Okay. So that was my error. Okay. Um, no, duly noted, but I just hadn't <laughs> seen it before. I thought, okay, what the heck's a recital? Okay. Well, I, I, I went back uh, when you asked me that, and I'm like, oh, the other one was like that, so I think I did it twice. <laughs> <laughs> At least you're consistent. That's good. Yeah, I know. Oh. <laughs> All right. So this is for approving updates to the programming policy. The library's policy relating to programming was adopted in 2002. Best practice is to review library policies on a three-year cycle attaches the copy of the updated policy with deleted material and added material noted. These changes are recommended by the library director and the assistant library director and have been approved by the city attorney. Major changes are as follows. There is the addition of the library's mission statement to the first paragraph, clarification of library sponsorship of programs. And then the policy update will be implemented upon approval and go into effect immediately. So the policy itself is not all that long, um, but there are a number of changes and such. I can certainly read through it or waive reading if, if we don't want to go through that. Is there a preference? Waive the reading. Wave, wave. Okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll waive the reading. I'm assuming that everyone has read it though and, and is in agreement with it, but we'll guess we'll find out when we. <laughs> so then I will entertain a motion to approve the updates to the programming policy as indicated. So move. Do I have second. a second? 
Okay, second. I have a motion and a second to update the programming policy. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'd just like to add a quick question. Nope. And that is, am I mistaken or have we in the past on certain things perhaps uh, maybe approve these changes to a policy such as this um, after like a 15 or 20 day posting period so that the public has a chance to see them like on our website uh, where we've put these new policies with changes before the public so that we could get any feedback about oh. them from them I think we did that for did our we? new um, yeah I think we did, and fees yeah. we did it with yeah, we yeah did we've it done some things with, with that I remember and we also did it for we put the what was it the strategy out there or yeah the our five, oh. our I don't five believe we've plan. done it with the policies since yeah. I've been with the library okay. but we have in the past we have mm -hmm. um, had a first reading at the board and then approved the policy the following month uh, we don't currently have our policies posted on our website mm -hmm. um, in this format. I mean, we have information that's related to the policies that the public would need. But if anyone were to ask for our policies, we would provide them certainly at the library to them. That's, that's a good point, too. Yeah, I do recall that in the past we've had a first reading and then we kind of had a month to mull it over and then we've done the second reading okay. and approval. I mean, for, for the ones that we have here today, I, you know, I mean, we could go either way. I don't see a problem with it. Okay. Uh, the changes that we're looking to enact uh, are seem to be bringing it up to what's uh, more relevant with what we've got uh, with, with the current climate and such. Um, so do we want to you know, <coughs> hold off on, on that for a month or, or do we want to uh, just vote on it now? Let's be consistent. Okay. <laughs> that's all I think we should be. That's, that's my yeah. point. <laughs> let's do it for all. If we're going to do it, let's try and make it the okay. same. So if we've done it in the past where we've yep. read it so. and then let it sit for a month, we can do that again. Okay. Um, so why don't we do that then? This will be the first reading. So mm -hmm. basically, we'll we'll strike the vote from the record. Oh yep. Yeah. Like so stricken. <laughs> I just like doing that. It's so been a long time since we've stricken <laughs> anything from the record. <laughs> Chris will remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so this will be considered then the first reading, and then I'll do the same thing for the next resolution because that's a policy update as well. All right, so then we'll move on to the next one, which is resolution number 2019-17, and we'll call it the first reading. Approving updates to the Wi-Fi hotspot policy. The Wi-Fi, the library, excuse me, has three Wi-Fi hotspots that are available for checkout to patrons. The library director recommends that Wi-Fi hotspots can be placed on reserve as other materials in the library omitting verbiage from the policy that they cannot be reserved. This will enable more patrons to gain access to the hotspots to use. The policy and user agreement have been reviewed by the city attorney and his suggestion regarding web usage and data access have been incorporated into the document. The policy updated will be implemented upon approval and will go into effect immediately thereafter. And so the, the hotspot policy is printed out there. And this one is not, does, doesn't have as many changes as the uh, uh, edits as the other one does. Uh, Paulina, do you want to, there is one significant change though yeah, with the. I see that, or reserved is crossed out, but we just talked about they want the ability to be reserved, so that should probably be changed. But I don't know about the renewal part of it. Because it says, uh, the second paragraph says, hotspot checkout is limited to one per family, the lending period is one week, and hotspots cannot be renewed oh. or reserved. But mm -hmm. the re or reserved was crossed out, but yet we just mentioned in the in the resolution that we would like them to be reserved. So, All right. Okay. So I don't know how we want to get that Freeze changed. That. Okay. To one or the other has to change to to so that they match up. Right. We would like them um, for patrons to be able to reserve them. Okay. Well, a re mm -hmm. reservoir is not a renewal. Or place a hold on a hotspot like a book or a DVD. Would they be able to do that online? Or would yes. it require, mm -hmm. they would be able yeah. to do it online? Mm -hmm. okay. 
And I see there's some pretty substantial fineage for, for returning them late and then uh, yeah. not replacing them. So it's uh, hopefully that's incentive enough. I don't know. We, we haven't had any problems with that, have we? Um, we usually, if they don't come back, we do deactivate them um, just to prompt someone then, to return then do, them. Do they come back yeah. after that? Have usually, they? yeah. <laughs> so have we had any that have not ever come back and then we've eaten it? Or not yet. <laughs> <Good>. I, well, <laughs> I, I, I think we did when, I think before Paulina's time, I think we did have one that didn't come back and we turned off the, the access to that one and then... Um, so it was basically bricked for that person. And then we were at a point where we had our um, free replacement from Verizon. So we okay. were able to get new equipment without any cost to okay. us at that point. So that we, we didn't have to send out the repo squad? No. <laughs> send out the boys? Okay. Are we still dealing with or are we starting to deal with, again, the same people using it? Is that kind of what we're trying to reduce mm -hmm. from yeah, this again? Okay, so this is just another option to maybe encourage others to right. use it okay yeah um we th <coughs> i think we've had um, a couple people um new people who i haven't seen you know come in um to request one or um that i don't think get the opportunity to check right. one out um so i think if we had a reserve list like uh, two people can't you know mm -hmm. one library card can't place a hold on an item multiple times so they would have to return it and then place a holes on it again so i think that yeah. might kind of go up more I, I remember in the past we had an issue where there were there was loopholes where there they weren't on the you couldn't reserve them mm -hmm. so when one person returned it they couldn't take it out again but another family member would be right behind them and okay i'll take it out then or, or someone they know i think we're right, seeing yeah. that so a little what bit ended up happening again. is that mm -hmm. anybody yeah. outside that system mm -hmm. couldn't get in right. and to reserve them yeah. okay all right so then next month we will um, take up the second readings and adoption for these two policy changes any other business not that I can think of, no. All right. Anybody else have anything they want to bring up? All right. Then I'll consider this meeting adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you.